This video is titled Deception Number 7B. It's the second uh, of uh, likely three parts. That a, it is a deception that a mystic, mystical experience, a mystic <clears throat> cannabis delivered Holy Spirit is profane. And again, I uh, plead with all of those who are on the other side of that they that they think that it is profane. I say it's holy. You say it's profane. Let's draw swords and use the word to find witnesses in the Bible. And I'm going to show you, uh, you know, if we're having a court case, this is, uh, uh, this is the evidence, right? I'm going to prove a point with evidence. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> When I last left off, we were talking about the unpardonable sin, which that is where uh, whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. So, for instance, the Pentecost are blaspheming with a false witness because, number one, they, they cannot have the Holy Spirit because they haven't repented. They, they are antinomian, which means... Uh, they don't believe in a biblical theocracy, right? I believe in a biblical theocracy like the kingdom or the Garden of Eden or heaven on earth, uh, a kingdom, the kingdom that Jesus spoke about in his parables. It was his primary focus. That's in, in order to be a true believer, you have to be a, the, a theocrat. There is one king, <laughs> period. And we're to render only to that one, and cannabis reestablishes that uh, com uh, chain of command, uh, obedient to uh, this, thou shalt have no other gods before me, like a pharaoh or a Caesar or a Rothschild, whatever. Okay, so a mystical definition, a mystical definition, something that is mystical involves spiritual powers and influence that most people do not understand. They don't understand them so much that they actually hate them. And here's a, uh, a witness of that with uh, Joseph and his brothers. Prophets are hated. They are hated because they have direct witness. The Holy Spirit indwells and they have uh, the ability to uh, prophesy. They have abilities to uh, have understanding. Okay, and they see through all the nonsense. They see through the con the U.S. Constitution is just an idol. It's a deception, and cannabis dissolves that idolatry where you're connected to the flag and the anthem and all that nonsense. It's vanity of man. Okay, so uh, Joseph, Gen uh, Genesis 37:3. Now Israel loved Joseph. Israel is Jacob. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his sons because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a uh, varicolored tunic. It's uh, Joseph's uh, dream coat, multicolored like a rainbow. It's uh, supernatural. His brothers saw that uh, their father loved him more than all of his brothers, and, and they hated him. And then they could not speak to him on friendly terms. Verse 5. Then Joseph had a dream, and he told his brothers that they hated him even more, and he said to them, Please listen in this dream which I have had, and behold, we were, we were binding sheaves in a field. And we, they went into a captivity, and they, he ended up ruling over them, because Yahweh, uh, when, you, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you have wisdom, you have understanding, and a... a, a it's like playing three-dimensional chess. You like look at the chessboard and you see, you know, when we're, we're, when our mind is captive in Mystery Babylon, we, we believe idols, we are subject to the two-level game of chess. <clears throat> you can't graduate. You can only look at the world and, and, you know, the United States versus China, the United States versus uh, North Korea or whatever. But when you graduate from that with the Holy Spirit, you can look at it like a three-dimensional chessboard and you say, ah, I can see how we're getting played. It's really simple. You know, there's another level pew, pew, shooting down on us. Okay, and that's what's going on. 
Okay, so mystical experiences as witnessed by the Bible, Jacob's ladder, Joseph's dream coat, Moses' burning bush. This is the memorial of the burning bush. It's intended to be a repeatable event. <clears throat> uh, Elijah's chariot of fire, the transfiguration, the Pentecost Holy Spirit, Paul on the road to Damascus. The Bible is replete with instances of mystical experiences, and I'm just getting started, okay? Uh, Samson in uh, Judges 14.6. And the Spirit of the Lord came he he mightily upon him, and he r rent him. He, he was fighting a lion, and he basically was uh, ripping a lion apart. And he rent upon him as he would rent a kid, like a little goat. And he had nothing in his hand, meaning he had no weapons. And he, told, he did not tell his mother and his father what he had done. All right, so Samson right holy spirit power it's a powerful superhero ish kind of thing in fact if you think of all the superhero shows superman batman ba -ba -ba, all them guys all those guys ain't got nothing greater than israelites who receive the anointing and the holy spirit and have the power to uh do uh miracles to for david to beat goliath David was anointed first with holy anointing oil of cannabis of Exodus 30:23. Okay, uh, first, I want to explain this, that the Bible explains the mystery of the Holy Spirit and how it, you know, if you don't get the Holy Spirit, like, you can't even read the Bible. Like, it, you just won't get it because the Bible is about people who are first witnesses. They, they are direct re, uh, revelators. <clears throat> condemning a bunch of people who are hypocrites and don't have the Holy Spirit and because they don't they hate the prophets who do have it it's a repeatable event over and over and over first Corinthians 2 6 how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect yet not the wisdom of this world nor the princes of this world that come to naught meaning like the you know, the, the princes of this world, like everybody builds them up like a Trump or an Obama, and they come to nothing. But we say we're wise. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So basically, Yah has set the table. It's a mess. The whole planet Babylonian captivity, there's no solutions out there. There's more conflict and more fighting and... and, and war and rumors of war and degeneracy and uh, the, the Jews, uh, the synagogue Jews are doing wicked stuff and, and most Christians are actually worshiping them. <laughs> the deception is so profound, right? Well, Yah and his children come in inspired by the Holy Spirit with the solutions and, and put the ball over the goal line with 144,000 and they do it in less than a year once you have that number you need the number first but we can't even get to the number because we need people to share the good news we got a winning plan <laughs> right it's not ours my doctrine is not my own it's his who sent me the good news is Jubilee the release of captives we don't have to be debt slaves anymore we all get a land inheritance <clears throat> okay uh, Exodus 37 uh, talks about the altar of incense, and there's two witnesses um, for, you know, smoke. There's actually lots of them. So here in Numbers 11:25, okay, the Lord came down in a cloud. Okay, this is when they got uh, 70 of the elders uh, received the the spirit of Yahweh at the same time, right? At the altar of incense with smoke, the same way that Zacharias does it in the New Testament. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spank, spake unto them and took the spirit that was upon him and he gave it unto the 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, <laughs> prophesied. And they did not cease prophesying, just like I am not ceasing to prophesy. We can do it. We will do it. 
Let's get it on already. And if you don't believe in this, then debate it. If, you, if you're saying the things that I'm saying are uh, untruths, then, you know, lead, follow, or get out of the way, right? But I don't see leadership right now. There's no offensive against Babylon, except the one that we're doing right now. Right now. This offensive, now. We, we've been doing it for five, six years. You know what I mean? We, we had a working, operating, usury-free currency in Breckenridge. Uh, there's other groups in Colorado doing usury-free currencies. There's something called uh, uh, Star Tribe Hours, right? So there's these atheists who, who are more courageous than, than, than the believers, right? Because the atheists largely have had mystical experiences. And I, I'm, I'm saying they, they don't have their doctrine perfect because they're uh, uh, using strange incense. But, and they're never going to get to the destination because of that, because you have to be obedient to the king. All right? So the, the point is, but even with that, they're being more courageous in revolutionaries. And I got to get my revolutionary friends together with my believer friends. And when you have that, and you, we all get through the narrow gate together, you have an exodus. Oh, this is so hard to believe that this is so difficult to get going. Okay, Luke 1, uh, 8 through 12. This is Zacharias in the New Testament at the altar of incense, having a mystical experience with the cannabis at the altar of incense. Listen for it three times. <clears throat> Now it happened that while he was performing his priestly service before God in the appointed order of his division, according to the custom of the priestly office, he was cho chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of people were praying outside at the hour of the incense offering. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him, Zacharias, standing to the right of the altar of incense. Zacharias was troubled, for he saw an angel, and fear gripped him. Isn't that what Yahweh needs? Is to have the fear of Yahweh instead of the fear of Caesar? That's why the incense is so, it, it dissolves idolatry. You're like, oh, judgment. Here's, here's Yahweh. I read about him, <laughs> but now I see him. Now I'm a direct witness, just like the 70 in uh, Numbers 11.25. Right? Do you want to be a hypocrite and condemn others who have witnessed, who are anointed, who are Christ's? It's a requirement in order to be a Christian. You have two options. Are you either pro-anointing or anti-anointing? That means you're pro-Christ or anti-Christ. So if you're against the anointing, you're against the Bible. That means you're against... Yeah, <laughs> and direct revelation of his people. All right, so now, uh, so I established um, the anointing uh, so through a mystical experience. That's cannabis. That's cannabis in the form of smoke. Now, cannabis in the form of holy anointing oil, which is in Exodus 30, 23. So I'm going to show you the effect and how uh, the anointing affected, how the anointing affected uh uh, Saul in 1 Samuel. All right, 1 Samuel 9. Starting off in 1 Samuel 9, uh, 15. <clears throat> this, this is, I'm going to read a bunch here because I want you to see. But basically, Yahweh picked Saul to be a king, even though he didn't want there to be any earthly king. You know, not one to rule over all of them. We are supposed to be kings and priests, but we are to rule just, uh, you know, judges of tens, fifties, uh, hundreds, and thousands. That's the highest, the hierarchy of judges. And, and basically the judges don't do anything unless somebody brings a, uh, a quarrel to them. And then he judges the quarrel. <clears throat> okay. So Saul, this is essential. Saul was in charge of Yahweh's inheritance. Uh, <clears throat> 15. And now before Saul's coming, the Lord revealed this to Samuel saying, so there's this constant talk between God and the people like, hey, Samuel, I want you to anoint uh, this cat named Saul, right? And they like Saul, like had to look for him. About this time tomorrow, I will send 
I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him to be prince over my people in Israel, and he shall deliver my people from the hand of the Philistines. For I, I have regarded my people because they, their cry has come to me. Remember that their cry has come to me. So if we complain and we, we see, keep seeing the degeneracy that we have and the captivity we have, but we cry out because, oh, Bitcoin, save me, or oh, uh, gold and silver, please save me, and where my survival skills save me. If we do that, or if we say, oh, we need to get back to the, you know, the, the initial intention of the, the, the U.S. Constitution, <laughs> right? If we say that, we're not crying out to Yahweh. And we can't cry out to Yahweh if we think man can make any laws at all. He won't have it. Like, you, you, that you want a whore? This is what you get. <laughs> You're whoring, and this is what you get. You want to make me your God? You want to make me your king? You obey only me. And then I'll hear your cry. Then I will hear your prayers. Because the Bible says, if uh, those who refuse to put their ear to the king, and we put our, if we don't put our, the way we don't do that is, is we say man can make laws. Okay. So when you get anointed, there's a mission. There's an omission. The, the first job of the omission is to deliver Israel, <laughs> right? It's not, oh, I've got the Holy Spirit. Um, all right, I'm going to go study flat earth from now on. <laughs> the apostles weren't doing that. David didn't do, like, no, there's no record of that being the focus. The focus of those who receive the Holy Spirit is there on a mission to end the captivity. <clears throat> That's why the prophets are sent. That's why the prophecy is revealed. It's to help the people. Um, okay, and by the way, Samuel was also a seer. Right? This is a real position. Like, it's a position to be a seer. That, like, the king would go, hey, I, I, will you be my seer? I need help with this. Right? Because eventually what happens is you can no longer be a judge. There's an uh, age bracket. And I think I'm at past the age bracket. I believe it's from 20 to 50. I'm not positive. I got to look that up, right? So I can still be a seer, even though I'm pat like a like a Samuel, okay? All right. When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said to him, "Behold, the man of whom I have spoke to you. This one shall rule my people." Then Saul approached Samuel at the gate and said, "Please tell him where the seer's house is." Saul said this. Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me to the high place for you to eat with me uh, today and in the morning. I will let you go and tell you what is on my mind. Tell you what's on God's mind. <laughs> um, all right. And then Samuel took the flask of oil and poured it on his head, kissed him and said, has not the Lord anointed you to rule over his inheritance? All right, now moving on, and I want to show you, there's, there's, and I want you to hear these things as I say it. All right, the anointing as a cause and effect relationship. There's an anointing cause effect relationship with the Holy Spirit. You, you get the Holy Spirit. So number one, it's changed into another man. God gave him a new heart. He received the spirit of, of the Lord. Uh, he received the spiritual gift. In the New Testament of prophecy, uh, musical appreciation, but not tongues. Like he was hanging out with musicians because it soothed him, but he did not have the ability to speak in tongues like David had. And David used uh, a harp basically to soothe him when he had an evil spirit. Um, okay, so I'm going to do this verse here. It's a, uh, uh, read this first Samuel 10:5. After you, afterward will you come to the hill of God where the Philistine garrison is, and it shall be shown as soon as you have come to the city where you meet a group of prophets coming down from a high place with a harp, tambourine, flute, and a, a lyre, or lyre, before them, and they will be prophesying. Musicians prophesy. Hmm. Rastafari, prophets. <clears throat> Six. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily, and you shall prophesy with them and be changed into a new man. It shall be when these signs come to you 
Do for yourself and as the occasion requires, for God is with you. And you shall go down before me to Gilead, and behold, you will go down and, and offer burnt offerings and sacrifice peace offerings. You shall uh, wait seven days and uh, come to you, and I'll show you what to do. Then it happened, and he turned his back to leave Samuel. God changed his heart, just like he was promised. And all those things came about on that day. And, um, and when they came to the, the hill there, behold, a group of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him mightily, so that he proph prophesied among them and said to one another, What happened to the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? A man there said, now, who is their father? Therefore it came to the proverb, Saul is among the prophets. When he had finished prophesying, he came to the high place. So the point is you got anointed. You're now in charge, right? Yahweh delivers the prophecy. So you're like, oh, now I can see what we need to do. I know what we need to do. Well, they're, they're, number one, there's nothing to restrict us from beating these guys. It doesn't matter how many we got. All that matters is that we got God, <laughs> right? And if we say that the Constitution or that man can make any law or we're anarchists, we're doing what is right in our own eyes and we're idolatrous and we reject the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit and idolatry can't exist in the same spot. Okay, so again, lessons, cause, anointing, effect, changed into a new man. God gave him a new heart. He received the spirit of the Lord. He was, received the spiritual gift of the New Testament. Uh, he had music appreciation. All right. And he, now we're going to witness it again with uh, uh, David. 1 Samuel 16, 13. And this is prior to whipping, uh, this is prior to whipping Goliath. Then Samuel took a horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came heavily upon David from that day forward. So when the Spirit of the Lord is at Pentecost in the New Testament, guess how it's happening? <laughs> guess. Just out of nowhere? Or were they doing the same things at the, that they're doing, that they're required to do from the Old Testament for kings and priests? Okay, the anointing, New Testament. Mark uh, 12. Uh, oh, shoot. I didn't write that down. I think it's... Uh, I can't remember what uh, what chapter that is. I think it's Mark 3, uh, verses 12 through 13. So just remember this. So they went out and preached that the people should repent. Right? There's always repentance before the anointing. That <clears throat> they also drove out many demons and healed many of the sick, anointing them with oil. New Testament, Jesus endorsed anointing of human beings with flesh with oil on their skin because the anointing delivers the Holy Spirit it dissolves idolatry <clears throat> James again a second witness James 5 13 through 14 is there and by the way it's a mental illness to be idolatrous is to have fear you're, you're fearful the devil impregnates you with fear like Alex Jones does nonstop, or now you see TV does nonstop. You get impregnated with fear of the, you know, the, uh, the micro mosquitoes with the nanobot technology that can give you brain washing, which is mind blowing because the people that are promoting that are brainwashed. It's like the blind leading the blind. It, it will actually is. It's the blind leading the blind with no solutions, no vision, no prophecy, no ability to see how you beat these guys in less than a year, and it's all in the Bible because they don't have the Holy Spirit. So anyway, you have fear, you have idolatry, you get Stockholm Syndrome, you end up defending the very devils who are enslaving you. Uh, you get post-traumatic stress disorder, the, the, the military has it, and how are they curing them? With cannabis of Exodus. Case closed, okay. So, um, <clears throat> again, James 5, uh, 13 through 14. Is there any one of you suffering? He should pray. Is anyone cheerful? He should sing praises. Music. Is any of one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil. Lay hands on him, right? The anointing with oil. In the name of the Lord. 
And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick, the one who has mental illness to think that man, that Caesar can make laws, that Herod, the Edomite, is king. <laughs> For a couple examples there. Uh -uh. There are no anointeds. There are no Christians without the anointing. Right? You're not a Christ. There were no Christians until the anointing, until the anointed one anointed <laughs> people. Okay, so why does this matter? So in Revelation, in, in the Old Testament, all of the priests and all of the kings were anointed. It's, it was a job requirement. It's the law. Okay, so uh, just like uh, all of Aaron's sons were anointed, just like Aaron was anointed and the anointing, had a quantity, it came down to his beard and it dripped down to the hem of his garment. So we got to make sure in Breckenridge, Colorado, in two months from now, when we recreate a cannabis anointing for those of the uh, people who want to have a biblical baptism of water for repentance, right? No other gods, including Caesar or Pharaoh or Rothschild. That level of commitment to get married to Yahweh, uh, we might have to wait till Pentecost for that, but we'll get as close as we can. All right. <clears throat> All right, Revelation 1 6. I got five minutes. Okay, Revelation 1 6, because we're all key kings and priests. In, uh... Hey, Bugga Buggy! What's up, man? Okay, in Revelation, it says, and he made us kings and priests. Da da! Da da da! Da, da, da. And he made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He made us to be kings and priests in order to rule over the dominion in the exact same fashion that was charged to Saul. To rule the inheritance, the earth, the meek ones who surrender their will to focus on restoration of the foundation of the rock. Revelation 5.10, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on earth, the head and not the tail, right? The head loans without usury. Okay, there's a big problem right now. You got 40,000 denominations. Solution, the Holy Spirit unites. Let me give a couple examples. Of one mind, repeated twice in Acts 1.14 and uh, 2.46, uh, here's a verse uh, going along the same lines, Acts 4.32. The congregation of those who believed were of one heart and one soul, and not one of them claimed anything that belonged to him was, was his own, but all things were common to them. They had communal living. Think like the Amish or the American Indians, for instance. All right, uh, another witness in Acts uh, 2.44. A sense of awe came over everyone. Holy Spirit. And the apostles performed many wonders and signs, and the believers were together. The believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods, and they shared with everyone who was in need. Right? Because they realized everything, everything, everything that is, was, will be is Yah's. All of our thoughts, all of our actions in, in various ways. So either our actions and habits glorify Him or. Uh, blaspheme him and that's what the uh, Pentecostals are doing and by the way Hebrew Roots is doing it too it's blaspheming because we're using his name in vain we're not using his name to glorify him in a fashion that uh, ends the debt slavery of our children my, my son was just here he's not going to be raised as a debt slave he's not going to ever think the Constitution is the supreme law of the land or that man can make laws all right conclusion Holy Spirit brings focus on a mission and uh, we, we want to invite everybody to come to Breckenridge uh, this fall uh, for the Feast of Tents. Get out in the tents. It's Rocky Mountain High, Colorado. He was born again in his 27th year, coming home to a place he's never been before. Um, he left yesterday behind him. You might say he was born again. That could be you. That could be your song and your experience of Rocky Mountain mystical experience where you meet Yahweh at the altar of incense, uh, rebirth, all of the things that happened to Saul can happen to you. Uh, 
So anyway, we're talking about a Pentecost revival, and we could have this as big as, like, Woodstock. There's no reason except for cowardice, right? That's really it, just cowardice. It's the only thing stopping us. We could win, release our people in less than a year, but cowardice. Uh, but here's the deal. We are going to get some. Like, Anthony LaRocca is going to be there. Brett Jones is going to be there. Jim Callahan is going to be there. Henry Garman, all the way from Ecuador, is going to be there. And we're going to work on a lot more. So victory over evil is the mission. Uh, we want to establish ecclesiastic courts uh, with judges. Oh, let me see it. It's coping. All right. Time to get off camera. We're going to say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. You're on camera. Say one, two, three, bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, yeah, and measure, measure Israel. We need 144K, the uh, first fruits generation. And uh, that's what's up with what's up. We're going to have a Jubilee party, Feast of Tents, uh, October 6th through 8th. And if you can make it, Tribal Seeds is Red Rocks, October, sorry, September 26th. Da da! Da da! da, da. All right, so I hope I made a point. Thank you, Bugga Bug. Thank you. Got some coping. Anthony LaRocca, you recognize that? Remember that? Anthony LaRocca built above ground pools back in the day, 20 years ago. He's like, he was my best man at our wedding, and um, he, he's like the only SIGEP that still talks to me. <laughs> because, uh, you know, as uh, they said, he took the uh, road less traveled, so to speak. So, so did Anthony LaRocca. Good for you. All right, I gotta, uh, I'm on baby duty.